I shall deliver the land from the misery and the disaster we almost fell into. We have returned to truth and right. The gods were angry. The temples lost their power. The army became weak. Our supplications went unheard. God's mercy left us. But right has returned with the divine blessings of Amun through his wisdom, power, guidance, and benevolence. With the aid of the priests of Amun, with their devotion and loyalty, I pledge to uphold his name and to bring welfare and justice and peace to the whole land. I pledge this in the name of Amun Ra, the omnipotent, the mightiest of God. Hail Amun Ra! Hail to right and truth! king enjoyed life in the royal palace. He devoted almost all his time to poetry and music and to his young queen. The actual power of ruling was wielded by I. Tutankhamun enjoyed the arts and promoted them. Huge statues in honor of Amun were erected in the great temple 
and he rewarded the sculptors generously. However, Tutankhamun's health deteriorated. He had always been physically weak, and he did not beget any children. His health was wasting like the setting sun. Was it a slow poison? Was it tuberculosis? Suddenly, the palace announced the death of the young king. Was it crime? Was it fate? No one knows. Seventy days and seventy nights passed between Tutankhamun's death and his burial. But during this time, much was accomplished. The king's body was taken to the royal morgue for mummification. The heart, lungs, stomach, intestines were placed in four separate jars, guarded by the four children of Horus. The body was wrapped in linen bandages about 40 meters long and placed in the golden sarcophagus together with the beautiful golden face mask and other jewelry and ornaments. The whole lot were then placed in a larger sarcophagus. Meanwhile, hundreds of craftsmen were busy at work making jewelry, statues and urns and on the western bank of the river, a horde of laborers were digging the royal tomb in the mountainside. Seventy days and seventy nights after the king's death, all was ready. Tutankhamun began his final journey to eternity. The sarcophagus was carried to the pier and gently placed in the royal barge. The white sail, embroidered with gold, unfurled, and the barge head west across the mighty River Nile. It was a huge but sad procession that stepped on to the west bank. In front were the professional mourners with their faces painted blue. Then came the cemetery keepers who poured milk on the ground in the hope that its white color would guide the young king when darkness fell. Then came the priests of Ammon chanting incantations and reading from the Book of the Dead. Then followed the officials, courtiers, and the masses. Slowly, the huge procession wended its way to the Valley of the Kings, where the royal tomb was ready. The sarcophagus was carried through a long corridor dug into the mountainside to the burial chamber and placed inside a large sarcophagus made of granite 
then the king's golden throne, jewelry, and all his possessions were placed in the three other chambers. The priests withdrew and the chamber was sealed. The opening in the mountainside was also closed with all signs of a recent burial removed to guard the tomb against grave robbers. And the procession returned once more to Thebes to proclaim a new king. And so ends this brief story of King Tutankhamun. Oh, ye who gaze upon my face, be not misled or deceived. I have lived a short life, but a long death. I am a paradox. No one knows how or why I died. Only I know. I am king of Upper and Lower Egypt. I am Tutankhamun.